Hi, I'm Jennifer Dins, and I'm here at the Cool Tools Studio today, and we're going to do a project called Fun Wire Ring for Rough Stones. I hope you enjoy it. For this project, you will need a set of pliers, a ring clamp, a bezel pusher, some rough stones of your choice, um, a ruler, some sandpaper, a regular hammer, a rawhide hammer, a ring mandrel, bench block, and for the soldering part, you'll need a soldering pan or a kneeling pan with some pumice, a couple of soldering shelves, a third arm, easy, medium, and hard solder, flux, I used 18 gauge sterling silver wire, a titanium soldering pick, a fine tweezers, and of course your soldering torch, and a pickle pot. So today we're going to make this rough uh, nugget amethyst ring um, with sterling silver wire. And Cool Tools now has um, the amethyst, the aquamarine, and fluorite in rough, rough stones. And so I chose this one for my sample, but I do have a couple others here. So we'll start with the stone first. And first what you want to do is you want to go through the package and kind of find stones that are uh, maybe a little flatter on one side or maybe have some kind of intrigue on top um, or maybe it's a color that you like. Uh, this one's kind of nifty. Um, I think I'm going to uh, choose this one for today's project. But once you do that, um, then we'll build the ring around this stone. All right, so now that we've chosen our stone, and um, kind of have an idea of how we want to get it set. We're going to put that aside and we're going to grab our wire and now we have to think about okay what size do I need and for this project we're going to actually have to cut two pieces to the size ring that you need. So I'm going to make this one a size seven. So we'll start here and that should be good. Got it right here on seven on my mandrel. So I'll cut this first one. Make sure it's good and tight and flat. And I'm gonna slide it down just a little. There, size seven. And I'm gonna do that a second time. Size seven, wrap it around, leave a couple little wings on either side, snip it, okay. So you should wind up with two pieces, you should wind up with two pieces like this that are the size of the ring that you want. But before we actually start forming the ring, we're going to do our first bit of soldering. You need to make both your pieces straight. And what we're, our, our initial solder here is one small spot right here so that we can actually join these two pieces of wire together. So let's go solder. So I've got my kneeling pan here and I want to kind of preface this by saying I know that soldering can be a little daunting. I remember when I started and I am by no means any kind of silversmith, but um, soldering is a basic skill that a lot of us use and it really isn't as difficult as you think. So it's really worth giving it a try and Cool Tools has everything you need to do that. So I have my two pieces of wire here and I have them kind of like butted together simply because I want those two pieces to touch. Solder needs the metal to touch in order for it to flow. Solder will not fill a gap. So make sure that when you do solder that the pieces of metal are touching. All right, so here's my flux. I prefer it in a squeeze applicator or a spray. Um, it de just depends on your personal preference. I'm gonna put a drop of flux right here on this area. And the thing about solder is when you do multiple soldering, in a single piece, 
you want to go hard, medium, and soft solder. And the reason, or easy solder, the reason you do that is because hard solder requires a higher temperature to flow. And if you're going to solder again on this piece, which we are, we're going to use a medium solder so that we don't melt our original, our original solder join here. I put a little too many on there. I'm going to start with two. Now, typically what I like to do is put the pallions underneath my piece, but in this case, it works just fine to have them on top. All right, so I'm all set. I've got flux and I've got pallions and I have my torch and you're going to, going to need a soldering pick. The reason you need a soldering pick is if something slips, falls, moves, you want to be able to touch it and you're not going to do that with your fingers. So, <laughs> so I'm going to fire up my torch here. I always like to heat my solder pick just a little bit. That way if I do touch something, it won't stick. So I had one little pallium jump off, that's okay. But now I have to make sure that all my sterling gets heated here. So I'm gonna heat this whole thing. And then I'm gonna come in, oh, there we go. And focus right on the spot where I wanna be. That pallium didn't melt, that's okay. And there we go. All right, so here are our two wires just out of the pickle nice and shiny and they are soldered right here in the middle and it doesn't have to be pretty because all it's doing really is holding that back end for us. So we want to take our mandrel at this point and find our size, size seven. We're going to cross the, the wires like this. Now, my left side has crossed between and the right sides come over on either side. So what we're going to do that because ultimately this is where the stone will be set right in the middle. So our next task right now is to solder here and here. We're going to solder those two parts and then we're going to move on to the next step but it's important at this point that you remember it's got to stay at the size you need it so what you might want to do is hold it here take your hammer hang on where's my size seven there it is take your hammer and put a little ridge in there, and that's where we know where to solder. All right, so we're gonna go back to soldering. Oops, hang on, hang on, hang on. Make sure we're at our size seven. Okay. Hammer right there so we know where to solder. And then we're back to soldering those two pieces. So this part's a little fiddly. But I just want to point out here, so we've got our two wires this direction, our two wires that direction, and we want, and we hammered just a little bit to flatten that out, and we want these two wires to touch and these two wires to touch. And now we're going to our second soldering. Remember the first soldering was hard solder, and that was down here. This is going to be medium solder. So we're going to solder right here, medium solder. And I'm going to start that actually by flipping this over. I've got out my flux with my squeeze bottle. So I'm adding a little flux here and a little flux here. And now I grab my medium pallions. If you find that you put pallions on and they jump around, there's an easy fix for that and let me show it to you. Take your torch and just gently heat until you see that flux kind of bubble white. And then you're basically drying it out is what you're doing. So I'm placing the medium pallions on the part where I actually torch dried, torch dried, that's my new 
he was saying, torch dried, the flux. This way, the flux won't bubble and the pallions won't jump all over the place. All right, so I have two on each side. So now we're gonna start heating. And you know, it's important to remember that you need to keep your pick in your dominant hand and just use the torch in your non-dominant hand. Slowly heat. And you know, another thing I've learned with soldering, because again, I'm not a pro, just doing it as a hobby. I've learned that patience is a virtue. See, now I just lost that, that piece. So let's get that one flowed. That was good. Now this time, to prevent the pallion from moving at all, I'm gonna hold it down with my pick. I'll show you how to do that. Heat up my pick here. Grab the pallion. And there it flowed. Okay, we're good. Into the pickle it goes. So here is our, our partially completed ring, fresh out of the pickle. And you can see here, I've got these two areas are soldered. What this is going to be now, let's spread this open just a little bit here. So this is where our stone is going to sit. So our stone will sit here. So at this point, could we just fold those over? Well, maybe, yeah. But what I'm gonna do is take my extra wire here and actually make a base for it. So I'm taking my needle nose pliers and I'm just gonna curve around here. And just make an oval. And I'm not gonna cut it yet because I kinda wanna eyeball here and see, all right. If I set that stone there, oops, will that work? And yes, I'm pretty happy with that size, maybe a tiny bit smaller, but I think that will work because ultimately then these will come up as the prongs and then it has a nice solid base for it to sit on. So my next step then, I'm gonna move this out of the way. My next step then will be to cut this piece and solder this together. And again, I will probably use hard solder because it's the only thing I'm soldering, so I'll use hard and then I will solder this to the ring. So when you cut, if you're relatively new at this, you always wanna make sure that you cut your ends of whatever, your, whatever wire you're soldering, cut them flat. So I'm using this part of the pliers here as opposed to this part. So I'm gonna get a nice flat cut. I'll do the same with the other part of the wire so that both this and this are flat. Now we're gonna take our pliers bring these sides around so they meet and then we'll be soldering we'll be soldering this little join right here now one other thing that you might want to do and I feel it's rather important is take some sandpaper And I like to fold it so it's a little bit thicker. And then I take the wire and I just sand that end on this side and then sand the end, I'll flip that over, on this side. I'll flip it this way. Just to make sure that the parts that I cut are nice and flat. Because remember, when you're soldering, the two parts that the two pieces of metal that you're soldering together have to touch and the more metal that touches here the better our join will be so take some time and make sure that these are nice and flat and then we're going to go and solder one more time so i soldered my oval and shaped it a little bit because i want to make sure that it gives 
a wide enough space for this stone to sit, but not too wide that we have too much silver showing. So I think that's going to be pretty good. And then once we get it actually in the ring, we'll be able to, to fiddle around with the prongs a little bit to make them so that the stone is good and secure. So at this point, our next step is to take this oval and get it on our ring bed here and solder that on. Now since the back is hard solder, the ring is hard solder, the, o the oval ring is hard solder, and then the sides that we soldered is are medium, at this point to solder the ring onto, the oval ring uh, onto the ring, we will want to use our easy solder. And that way it will flow faster and we won't lose the rest of our joins. So I'm going to go solder those. Just going to try and get it a little bit centered here where I want it. The easy solder's letting me do that. And I think we're good. Into the pickle. Okay, so the ring so far is out of the pickle. And as you can see, I soldered the ring onto um, our band here. And these giant prongs, of course, we're going to trim them. But these would be the prongs. So this next part is actually my favorite part. So now what we're going to do is actually take the ring and the stone and seat the stone in a way that you feel is going to best show off the stone and allow for the prongs to, to capture it. So I'm going to hold the, the stone and the prongs. And as I do that, I'm bending them up. I know this is a little hard to see. I'm going to put it back on the mandal here. All right. So I'm thinking that this might be the best way. Um, I've got this side is going to be captured by this prong. This prong will, will capture this higher side. This side's real low, but that's okay because it's going to, this prong will grab it. And then this is kind of an extra side here that this prong will grab. So I'm going to push them all tight against the stone, making sure it's pretty secure. Looks like a little teepee. All right. So at this, oh, and see, it works. <laughs> it stays in there. So now the goal here is to trim these prongs to the right height that's going to give us um, enough uh, silver wire that we can create the ball on the end. Because as you can see on this one, we have little balls on the end that, that are actually capturing the stone and making it secure. Okay, so this is what it looks like, kind of kind of a crazy little little tent there. But our goal at this point is to snip each prong about five millimeters above where it's going to hit the stone. So here I'm looking at snipping here, here. This one will be real short. Okay, and I'm going to take my Sharpie and mark that. So I'm going to mark this one about here. It's about five millimeters. This one here. This one here. And then this prong right about there. So now I can actually remove the stone carefully. Make sure you remember which direction it was. I'll snip the prongs at that little mark. So here are my, my marked prongs and I'm just gently bending them open so I can get this stone out. And I'm actually going to set this stone the direction that it was so I remember how it was placed in there. So take your snip right at your mark and be confident that that mark is, is correct. So don't worry and don't cut too much because at this point now we're going to start balling this wire and we don't want too much wire. Oops. And then one more right here. Okay. 
save these for the next project. All right. So here is my my setting. Putting my stone back in the way I had it. And everything looks good. Okay. So it's in there nice and secure. Okay, so now that the prongs are cut, the last thing we want to take a look at is, okay, so where do we want the ball, the little, um, little ball ends, where do we want them to rest? So I'm, I'm going to make one more little mark here just to be on the safe side. Like, where do I want that little ball to rest? Because as I go over to my, my torch, and I ball up the ends, I have to be thinking, okay, don't ball it up too much or we won't have enough prong to capture our stone. So again, remove your stone and we are gonna go and ball up the prongs. I've got a setup here now uh, with the ring and my third hand. And what's important about this setup is that our prongs all face down. We've got our mark here as to how far we want that little little ball to go. So keep your eyes on that while you're while you're heating. So the first thing we want to do is take some flux, coat our prongs with flux, and that's also going to help um, help the, the, the sterling silver wire to ball up. And keep our eyes of course on those marks that we made with our Sharpie. So I'm going to start on this one that's closest to me here. Keep your flame right at the blue part, right at the bottom. Run the flame up and down. Not too much. We don't want to heat the whole thing. We just want to heat the prong. And there's our first ball. So now we'll go over here to the next one. Running my flame up and down. And there's my second ball. And here is the last prong. I'm running that flame just gently up and down the prong my eye on the little ball and there we go. So here we are out of the pickle. We've got all the all four balls looking really good. You have the option at this point if you'd like to flatten them and that's really easy to do. Just take your hammer, a couple of taps, keeping in mind which way the ball is going to be is going to go on your stone. Okay, so I'm manipulating the prongs here with my fingers a little bit. I'm going to get it in the clamp here so I don't deform the band at this point. Okay, so now I'm looking at it from all sides to make sure the stone is in there the way I want it. Pushing it a little bit with my fingers because the prongs are really soft right now. So I'm taking my, my bezel pusher here and I'm just gently kind of pushing these flat balls down to where I think they're going to rest really nice on this stone. And I can use my fingers still a little bit. I've got a little bit of play. I've got a little bit of play yet in the wire. And this is where the rough stone, you kind of have to work with it a little bit just to make sure that these prongs sit where you want them to sit. And I think, whoops, I think we got it made here. It's a little loose, so I'm gonna take my, 
my pliers and just gently give it a little squeeze and a little squeeze. Flatten these pieces down. And there we go. Good and tight in the ring. And at this point now, we'll tumble it to get some shine and do some last minute polishing. So we're all out of the tumbler here and everything's bright and shiny. This is the piece that I showed you in the very beginning that I had done previous. And here's the piece we worked on today. And as you can see, the rough stones, no two are the same, but I think that's what adds to the uniqueness of the project. So again, prongs flattened, everything's shined up. They're both a size seven. I made them both a size seven. And using this technique, you can not only set Cool Tools raw gems, you could set a piece of beach glass or something else. I hope you enjoyed our fun wire ring for rough stones project. You can use this project to not only set our rough stones, but to set sea glass and other found objects that you might have at home. Thanks for watching.